Hey, Flashpoint Army, are you looking for truth and news all in the spirit of faith? Well, don't forget to click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to stay connected. Not a part of the Flashpoint Army? Sign up for the latest email updates at govictory.com slash FP sign up and join us as we stand for truth and freedom. So let me show you a little piece of video. I don't know if you've seen this one. I haven't shown this one to you. Uh, look, this is some of the video. This one, this one stood out to me. It's just, it's no, there's no audio in it. But look at this guy, Lance. He's being walked in, handcuffs. Oh, wait a minute. Let's take these handcuffs off. Uh, I, what were we thinking? You know, it's all, the show is over, Lance. The show's over. Hey, fist bump, shake his hand, fist bump the other guy. All right, take all your stuff and leave. Uh, and then, you know, we'll see you at dinner tomorrow night. What, who knows what they're saying there? Uh, Lance, when you see this, this is just an amazing sign of what we're seeing being released in these, uh, in these videos. We have facial recognition, Gene. I'm fed up with it. I'm fed up with it. I'm going to have a rant right now. Get them subpoenaed. Get them up on the hill. Talk to us about what was going on there. Who was the guy they just let walk away? It, was he just the guy that was he, was he in the crowd? Or was he not working with the police? Christopher Ray needs to be dragged up there now and explain how many hundreds of FBI agents were out there and what was their role. This whole thing needs to be re-adjudicated. I'll tell you why. They're going to make, against Donald Trump, they're going to make the MAGA movement sound like the evil threat in America. They're going to make Donald Trump the head of the insurrection on January 6th. The more heat we bring over the next year on exposing what happened on January 6th, the more we gut the narrative out from them so that they can't bring it up, and we start to expose the blatant corruption of this communist justice department, which is what it is. It's not two-tier. I think Bongino has it. It's a single tier communist regime. Right, Rick, why do you say we're going to keep rolling some of this footage uh, that's rolling? Rick, what do you think? You agree with Lance? Is that what it is, a communist regime? Yeah, man, this has been the uh, the Rostock fire for America. We've said it before, but just to remind our listeners, you know, that's what happened in 1933 in Germany. It's what it's what the Nazis used to, to take over and push out uh, any of their uh, political dissent, anybody that was against them, uh, so that they could get the votes for the enabling acts to give Hitler complete power. That sounds crazy to people. You know, let's get Mike's uh, tinfoil hats back out here. That's what people will think. But that's exactly what the Democrats have done. They've taken only the violent videos, and, and let's not sugarcoat it. Let's be intellectually honest. There were bunch of idiots there as well, right? There were a small crowd of crazy people that did crazy things, and then there was a massive crowd of patriots that simply wanted Congress to do their job. So let's be honest about the whole thing. Let's show both the, the violence and the peaceful people and tell the whole story, the good, the bad, the ugly. But what the left is doing is only the bad and the ugly. They're using that. Right. That was the only narrative. That's all we heard about for three years in order to label anyone that said, make America great, anyone that said, Donald Trump is my candidate, anyone that said, I love America, I love the Constitution, I'm against Joe Biden and the communists and what they're doing, that somehow we were violent, that we were the ones gouging eyes and, and, and attacking police officers. Absolutely not true. So this is huge that we're getting all of the footage out there so we can get the whole story. I love what Laura Logan is doing uh, with the rest of the story, and, and there, we're right. going to see more and more of that now that the footage is available. Well, let me circle oh, back by here. by the way, Gene, yeah, horrible that the footage was not available to defendants. Talk about That's two-tiered right. or one-tiered, however you want to call it. Exactly the fact right. the Bill of Rights was ignored and the defendants could not get access to this footage, that is absolute evil. That happens in third world countries. Should not happen here in America. So let me go back to Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. What do you think? You see this footage, obviously, you know about it, and the, and the peaceful. Like, we all agree there are some bad actors in there, but the bulk of these people are you know, walking slowly through the through the the halls there. Uh, what, what say you, Congresswoman? Well, you know, a lot of that video looks like an ordinary day at the Capitol where I work, where tourists are walking through. Uh, that's that's what a lot of those videos look like. And let's be really honest, there were bad actors there. We don't know who they are, whether they were federal agents, um, out an outside group, some sort of funded group. Um, who knows? Maybe a foreign country. Uh, we don't really know, but we America deserves the truth. And and I believe, and I, I've been calling for this, all the peaceful January 6th defendants, all of their charges should be dropped. They should be let out of jail. 
The Department of Justice needs to stop pursuing these people. The FBI needs to leave them alone, stop raiding their homes in the middle of the night with the media standing out in the driveway, stop chasing them down in, in cities and small communities with helicopters and tanks in the streets. This needs to end. And we need people to be as, as vocal as possible and put pressure on, on the administration to stop because the reality is it is not going to stop until we get President Trump in the White House and we take back control of the Department of Justice. But we need America to stand up to this tyrannical government that we have right now and tell them enough is enough. Um, and I'm, I'm, I wrote about this a lot in my book, Jean, uh, and it's important to hold our government accountable. After all, it is funded by the American taxpayer. So Listen, there's something about President Trump that just people have lots of reactions to President Trump. They love him. Oh, he's horrible. But I have never heard this. Look at this interview with Jen Psaki. Watch. So there's been so much speculation, contemplation, discussion of what Trump wanted to do, what he knew or didn't know. I mean, do you think as a prosecutor, former <clears throat> prosecutor, this is something that could be useful in the case against Trump? How will it be used? Yeah, well, I mean, look, he says uh, I would be well received because he knows that the people who were there are his supporters who he riled up and incited to invade and riot at the Capitol and try to disrupt the proper counting of the Electoral College votes. So every time he talks, he's uh, putting himself into a bigger criminal hole. Uh, but the, but his, that's not his objective. His objective mm. is purely political at this point. Uh, politics don't work in a courtroom, as I think he's finding out in the mm. New York Attorney General case in New York, a civil case, and, and that's going to continue in his criminal trials. But his rhetoric is really getting dangerous, more and more dangerous. And we saw what happened on January 6th when he uses inflammatory rhetoric now, and his recent True Social post uh, is incredibly, incredibly scary for anyone uh, that might be trying to op work in government. And um, it is just uh, unquestionable at this point that that man cannot see public office again. He is not only unfit, he is destructive to our democracy, uh, and he has to be, uh, he has to be eliminated. Wait, what did he say? Lance, he said he has to be eliminated. Listen to what Charlie Kirk said, then I want to get your comment. Charlie Kirk says, if a Republican went on TV and said that a Democrat presidential candidate needed to be eliminated, they'd be raided by the FBI within hours. Donald Trump is facing half a millennium in prison for saying people should fight. Instead, Dan Goldman loses the assassination of Donald Trump and does so with zero consequences and zero fear of any. Uh, what else? What else could possibly happen here, Lance? And he's right. Charlie's right. They, they would be taken to task. They find themselves in a D.C. jail. Hey, listen, there, there's a nut job, former director of the CIA under Bush, and it just, I think it's Hyatt or something like that. The guy, it drove me crazy. And the guy said that Trump should be shot. That kind, and, and, and nobody talks about it. A former director of the CIA puts that word out there. Um, it, so here, here's what I will tell you. There's an interesting verse. We have a spiritual audience out there in Flashpoint, and it refers to when Satan takes people captive at will. The, what you're looking at in media and in on the left is a, a situation where people are beyond the point of rational, objective discourse, because there's a number of people that are actually turning in their opinion of Trump. The African Americans uh, male, for instance, population has gone up to 26 percent, shifting towards Trump. So there's a number of people that, no matter what kind of propaganda has been bombarding them, are still able to think. But there is a group of people, and you'll hear them in the political class, and you'll hear them in the media, and you'll hear them frequently in academia. Honestly, Gene, they are taken captive at will, and this is the language we have in the New Testament of people who have lost the objective faculty use of their mind and have it kind of seized with a kind of narrative and perspective that overrules their own judgment, and now an idea has them. They don't have an idea. You're going to see this increasing for the next year, unlike uh, 2020. 
the rhetoric, the emotion, and the degree of bizarreness is going to start to manifest. And we're going to have to be really held back by the fruit of the spirit of self-control because we're going to be in the presence of demons talking through people. Let, let me go back to Congresswoman Marge Taylor Green. You heard that uh, eliminated comment. What's your thoughts, Congresswoman? Well, as a member of Congress, I serve on the Homeland Security Committee with Dan Goldman, so I'm very familiar with him. Also serve on the Oversight Committee with Dan Goldman, and he is a uh, Levi Strauss trust fund baby. He is he is ultra rich, uh, one of the elites, disconnected from real America, uh, is completely clueless of what it takes to actually work hard every single day. Um, he's also a radical leftist, and he served as one of the attorneys on President Trump's first impeachment under the Russia hoax. Uh, Dan Goldman is, is absolutely serious when he says President Trump should be eliminated, and he knew exactly what he meant when he said it. I saw that he also had to come out and he issued an apology for that statement because it's completely unacceptable. But but never um, never forget who Dan Goldman is. Uh, he is definitely part of the deep state. Uh, that's that's where he comes from. He's part of the radical left. He's part of the Communist Democrat Party, and and so we should take him at his word. I think he definitely meant what he said. Yeah, he, you're right, and thank you for bringing it up. He did actually post a tweet and said, I apologize for the poor choice of words. Okay, all right, so your book, MTG, uh, published by Winning Team Publishing, our good friend Sergio and everybody over there. Again, tell us again how people can get this book, Marjorie. Okay, they can go to mtgbook.com, mtgbook.com. Order your copy, order a couple of extras to put in the stockings at Christmas. It's a great read. It's a book you don't want to miss. Um, and it's flying off of shelves. It just came out today, and the orders have been flooding in. So go ahead and get your orders before it sells out. And I'm thrilled for you all to read it and really learn what goes on in the swamp and what we can do about it. Thank you, Congressman, for joining us. Uh, before we go to break, I want to play this video. I, Producer Jason found this, uh, a Trump 24 piece narrated by Tucker. Can you believe that? Watch this. Millions of Americans sincerely love Donald Trump. They love him in spite of everything they've heard. They love him often in spite of himself. They love Donald Trump because no one else loves them. The country they built, the country their ancestors fought for over hundreds of years, has left them to die in their unfashionable little towns, mocked and despised by the sneering halfwits with finance degrees, but no actual skills, who seem to run everything all of a sudden. Whatever Donald Trump's faults, he is better than the rest of the people in charge. At least he doesn't hate them for their weakness. Donald Trump, in other words, is and has always been a living indictment of the people who run this country. That was true four years ago, when Trump came out of nowhere to win the presidency, and it's every bit as true right now. Trump rose because they failed. It's as simple as that. If the people in charge had done a halfway decent job with the country they inherited, if they'd cared about anything other than themselves, even for just a moment, Donald Trump would still be hosting Celebrity Apprentice. But they didn't. Instead, they were incompetent and narcissistic and cruel and relentlessly dishonest. They wrecked what they didn't build. They lied about it. They hurt anyone who told the truth about what they were doing. That's true. We watched. America is still a great country, the best in the world, but our ruling class is disgusting. A vote for Trump is a vote against them. That's what's going on in this country. All right, uh, Rick, let me go to you out of that piece. You know, you, you hear the comment there that Tucker makes, uh, a vote for the ruling class, uh, a vote for Trump is a vote against them. Uh, do you really see it that way? Yeah, you know, Gene, I, I, I hate to keep going back to 1930s Germany, but I, I, I just can't stay away from the similarities. We're in a race. We're, we're in a race between those who would save America and, and, and essentially have a political counteroffensive 
to the left's domination of all of these different institutions in America. We're in a race against them being able to literally stamp us out. I mean, just prevent us from having any voice, being able to do exactly what Goldman said, eliminate Donald Trump and do more of what Marjorie Taylor Greene witnessed with my friend Louis Gohmert uh, at the Gulag in uh, in Washington, D.C., which was absolute violations of the Eighth Amendment and most of our other uh, Bill of Rights uh, due process amendments. The, the abuse of people for their political position, not allowing them to shower, shave, cut their nails. I mean, solitary confinement, it's evil stuff, what was done to them. And I really believe they want to do that to all of us. I think we're in a race to stop an absolute totalitarian state. And the only way we're going to win that race is if people do not sit on the sidelines any longer. They have to get engaged to prevent this evil from spreading across our nation. So I think the way that Tucker uh, said that is is absolutely right. And, and I think they want to eliminate not only Donald Trump, but the rest of us. Uh, in the last uh, eight minutes or so, I want to get to the to the polls because the polls, we all believe the polls, right? All right. I know you don't, but watch what Meet the Press had to say about Joe Biden. Watch. Here it is. Wow. Donald Trump, we have at 46 percent. Biden, 44. And this is significant because this is the first time in the history of our poll that former President Trump beats President Biden still within the margin of error, but still significant. Yeah, it's 2019, 2020, when Trump was president, he trailed all of them. This year, he's trailed all of them in our poll. First time in more than a dozen polls, we've seen a result like this. Some of the other ingredients that go into that, Biden has long had an advantage over Trump on likability. Look, at the start of this year, 39% said they had a positive view of Biden, barely 30 of Trump. We've seen consistently a gap like this. Now, the gap is gone. Mm. 36 positive on both, and actually Biden Biden, one point more negative than Trump. That's been a significant advantage for Biden. Our poll says that advantage, at least for now, may be gone. And we talked about younger voters on foreign policy, and it's true on a host of other topics. Disaffected with Joe Biden, we have 46% for Trump, 42% for Biden among the youngest voters. The youngest voters in the 2020 election were Biden plus 26. This could be a massive sea change. And if you take a look here, too, all, everybody sort of says, hey, I'm not too nuts about the possibility of this matchup. So we said, let's measure this one way. And here's how we did it. Biden against an unnamed Republican. This is just a referendum on Biden, basically. And look at this. He goes from being in a, a dogfight with Trump to being double digits wow. behind. But then flip it around. Trump against an unnamed Democrat. Trump goes from leading against Biden to being down by six points against the Democrat. Just a fascinating look at the state of the race with just a little under a year to go. Steve Kornacki, great stuff. Thank you Thanks. so much for being here. All right, uh, so you see that, gentlemen. Uh, what I want you to see was really that last little piece where they, if you were paying attention, you saw, okay, first of all, it's Meet the Press, and they're actually, I mean, we all, polls are a dime or a dozen and it depends on who you poll and anyway you guys understand that but what they're showing on meet the press was that last little piece there lance where she was talking about you know, if joe if anybody else ran against a republican look at the difference you think they're setting this up to say goodbye to joe biden sorry to do that axelrod is like the voice of obama so David Axelrod said, perhaps uh, <laughs> Joe Biden's a little bit too old. And Biden got rather, you know, upset about that. But here's the reality. You remember Bernie Sanders probably beat Hillary, but they have a thing called superdelegates. Now, here's the inside baseball flashpoint army. The inside baseball says that come convention time, if Biden hasn't stepped down by then for some reason, then the superdelegates are going to throw it over to Gavin Newsom, who you're noticing is creeping up in all kinds of odd ways. I mean, he's there greeting the president of China like he was the American representative in California. Uh, even Hannity has him facing off with DeSantis for a nationwide debate. What is going on here? It looks to me like they're setting up uh, the California governor as the candidate. Uh, the other part of that poll, Gene, and I'd be interested in what Rick says, that to me is interesting, is it only has Trump of the Republican up against the Democrat. However, the Democrats have a big problem. They've got Manchin, they got Kennedy, they have more than one candidate, and it's going to fragment probably more on the Democrat and the independents, and only Trump doesn't have a movable base. It's only going to get stronger.
Yeah, what do you think, Rick? Uh, Lance brings up a good point. You think you're going to see the Democrats uh, splinter out here? Well, first, I'm, I'm going to triple down again, man. I've been saying it for three years. Joe Biden will not be the nominee for the Democrats. Now, we're getting closer and closer, so somebody in my family is probably warming up some crow to go with the turkey for me, just in case uh, I end up being wrong on that one. But I absolutely uh, still adamantly believe it won't be Biden. I think Lance is right. They're going to do something at the convention to replace him if he hasn't stepped aside by then or you know been removed or whatever the outcome might be. They're looking for a way to get this guy off the stage, and it will be probably Newsom. Possibly Michelle uh, will swoop in at the last minute, Michelle Obama. Uh, but those numbers, that last poll, you're right, absolutely intriguing. Definitely left out Kennedy. He's at like 22% in, uh, in some of the polling that I've seen. Uh, I don't know who he's going to pull more from. I think he continues to pull from both if it's Biden and Trump. Um, let's not forget, I mean, you got to look at the left side of that whiteboard that he was showing. If it's not Trump, any other Republican does far better against Joe Biden. We cannot ignore that. We have to pay attention to that as well. Biden does a little, uh, or a generic Democrat does a little better uh, than Joe Biden. But all of those things have to be considered. That's why there's still a race in the Republican primary, even though the polling that we're making fun of on one hand that shows that Trump is way, way, way ahead may or may not hold after Iowa. Uh, we'll see where all of that goes. But uh, very, very intriguing. And uh, without a doubt, Joe Biden will not be the nominee. Most likely, Trump will be the nominee for the Republicans, which means who is the generic Democrat that they come up with? Will it be Newsom, Obama, uh, Michelle Obama, or somebody that we're not even thinking of right now? All right, Lance, you heard Rick go out on the... Yes. ...and say what he thinks. I want to get your take on that. I, I forgot. I forgot. I, mean, I listened closely to Rick when he talks, and I had forgotten how... He is rather committed to uh, the great governor of Florida, Governor DeSantis. Uh, I, and, and so part of your thinking is that anyone else could do better against the Democrats than Trump, because Trump does have some baked in, you know, opinions out there, right? But um, do you seriously think that even if Iowa is, is, uh, is close for Trump and not a total victory, do you think that that is going to suddenly uh, jeopardize his ability to dominate the Republican primary? No, I, I think if he wins, and, and even if it's close, uh, he, then, then the race is probably over. I think the only only way that there's a race after Iowa is if DeSantis actually wins. And, of course, he's got the endorsement now, Bob Vanderplatz and Kim Reynolds. Uh, so it's, it's very possible that DeSantis ends up winning in Iowa. That doesn't mean Trump loses. I just think it means there's a race. Only thing I'll correct you on there, Lance, is I'm not committed to DeSantis. I'm not committed to oh. anybody. I haven't endorsed anybody yet. Oh, I've just said of course, DeSantis no, is the no, best no, no. governor wait, wait, in wait, history. Wait, wait. Yes, <laughs> Absolutely. And, and Donald Trump is the best Absolutely. president of my lifetime. I like them both. Yeah, we're going to play the tape back. We can decide. play the tape no back point. for you, Rick. We can play the tape back for you. All right, so listen, in the last minute and a half of the program, I want to tell you about Flashpoint Pasadena, November 30th, <laughs> December 1st. We will be there right there in Southern California. Uh, Hank Kuhneman, Rick Green, John Amanchukwu, Abby Johnson, Charlie Kirk, Pastor Che on, Eric Metaxas, and Mike Lindell. You don't want to miss a minute. We're doing, we've got some big announcements we're making there uh, that affect Flashpoint, so you'll want to be there. If you want to know more information, go to govictory.com slash fplive. It's a free event. Gentlemen, you got 10 seconds each. Rick, go. Oh, man, That's it. I, I just you. want to say, hey, look at all the positives we talked about tonight. I, I think the fact that the footage is getting released on January 6th uh, is, is very good. I love the fact that this election uh, integrity uh, victory happened in Georgia. I think that's going to give Mike Lindell more mom momentum in getting our elections changed in the future as well. So good stuff tonight. All right, Lance, he took half your time. Okay, Sorry. now look, I said something earlier. It was very incendiary. Three, I want to back two. it up. August 11, 2022, General Michael Hayden is the one who made the comment about Trump. I want to get it on the record. I was right. Well, there you go. We'll see you next time. Have a happy Thanksgiving, everybody. See you Thursday.